How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 20, machining the expansion link. In the previous episode, I roughly got the expansion link to the right size. According to my micrometer, it is fully parallel, despite the comment I got from a gentleman this morning who said that he was surprised to see me using pieces of wood to set the level of the casting in the machine vise and that I should be using some parallels. And once again, for the umpteenth time, these instructions are designed for beginners, and beginners generally don't have things like parallels. Anyway, on with the job. Over now to my small Boxford lathe, where I'm making a part that's going to fit in the centre of the four jaw chuck, which more often than not is screwed onto a fitting attached to my rotary table. I use this four jaw chuck more frequently on the rotary table than I do on the Boxford lathe that it belongs to. The four jaw chuck screws onto a threaded adapter that is bolted to the rotary table, and in the centre of this adapter there is a hole. So what I'm doing at the moment is turning this shaft to fit into the centre of this adapter, and then I'm going to drill a quarter of an inch hole in the other side of it to take a metal peg. So this will give me an accurate centre reference on the four jaw chuck. More about that later. Quite a few viewers are writing in asking me to display speeds and feeds well, I can't really do that because I don't know what they are myself. As long as it feels right, it is right. All I can say is if you want to know about speeds and feeds, there are many reference books full of pages and pages of information about it. Removing the piece of metal from the chuck, it fits perfectly in the hole in the mounting for the four jaw chuck. All I have to do now is hold my needle file against it and rotate it, and then it's over to the bandsaw where I cut it to length. And for the viewer who wrote in asking, could he see a close-up of the bandsaw, well, here it is. And once the piece of metal bar is cut to length, it's back into the lathe, just to face the end to tidy it up, and of course, drill the quarter of an inch diameter hole in it. And as usual, this starts off with a centre drill, followed by a quarter inch twist drill. I don't need to use a reamer for this, this twist drill will be fine, and I verify the size with a piece of brass rod. I always remove the sharp edges with a file. And this bit's for John, who wrote in and said, you show a lot of filing in the lathe and tell us to use handles, but you never show us the handle of your file. Well, here we go. This is the handle of my file. And it's a bright orange polypropylene handle, and it's very beaten up because it gets a lot of use. And without fear of cutting my fingers on the sharp edges, I can now fit the part into the centre of the four-jaw chuck and here is the peg going in the hole, so I have a centre reference at all times in the four-jaw chuck. This expansion link needs a slot milling in it, and the slot needs to be curved at a radius of four inches. So this is the principle. Here's the ruler set in the centre at four inches, with the expansion link, or the centre of the expansion link, set in the approximate correct position right at the other end. Because my rotary table isn't big enough, I can't bolt the expansion link directly onto it, so I have to make an extension. Unfortunately, the largest piece of sheet metal I could find in the workshop was this piece. And there's a lot wrong with this, it's not quite long enough, and as it's only 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, it's a little bit too thin for this job. I'm going to use this piece of 3 sixteenths sheet metal, just to show you the principle. Using a felt tip pen, I mark out the length of slot required. And as I wind down the cutter into the work, I turn the handle on the rotary table first one way, then the other way. This piece of steel isn't long enough and it's too thin, so I'm going to go up to Blackgate's Engineering and buy some proper steel. And thanks to the magical world of digital video, that didn't take long. While I was at Blackgate's, I stocked up on some things I'm short of. I bought some 4BA steel nuts and some 4BA 1 inch hexagon steel screws. But the main part that I went for is here. Very nicely gift wrapped by Matt at Blackgates Engineering, I'm opening the package. And inside it is this lovely piece of quarter inch steel plate. And the very first thing to do is to wipe off all the oil that it's covered in, which stops it rusting. And then it's time to mark it out. Here's the expansion link blank, positioned on the plate. What I'm doing in this clip is scribing a line all the way across. I will then position the casting on this line so that the highest point of the scribed line on the casting corresponds with the line. Then I scribe a second line all the way down the centre of the plate at right angles to the first line 
and mark off four inches, followed by hitting it with a centre punch to make a small depression at the four inch point from the first line. And then I put the point of the compass in the depression, and then the pencil end of the compass describes an arc at the other end of the piece of steel. The next step is to put a little Loctite 603 on the piece of steel, I then place the expansion link blank in position on the line, and to verify that it is exactly in the right position, I rerun the pencil point of the compass over the expansion link, and I find that it more or less matches my roughly scribed line. Which is good really, I was quite pleased about that. Smug mode is now engaged, as it confirms that my calibrated eyeballs are still working after all these years. As some time needs to elapse now before the Loctite is fully set, I thought I'd show you this. When I was up at Blackgates, I bought this, and I'm really impressed with it. It's a mechanical lubricator of a slightly different design to the ones that I'm used to. The ratchet and spring type are notoriously unreliable, but having said that, the one on my locomotive that I run around the garden has been reliable. The design of this lubricator is slightly different. It doesn't use the ratchet and pawl type of movement, and that's pawl spelt P-A-W-L, not pawl as in Paul Simon. I also like the creative use of two rivets in the corners to hold the top piece in position. I will be painting this mechanical lubricator green to match the engine, and the question is, where do I put it? I don't want it sticking out of the side like this. I think it's going to go at the front at the side of the eccentrics and it's going to be the eccentrics that drive the arm. More about this later as the engine nears completion. When I do fit this lubricator I will make a fancy bracket so it hangs off one of the bolts because I don't want to drill any holes in the sole plate. By now the Loctite 603 will have cured so it's time to drill some holes to make sure this part is bolted firmly to this steel plate. I'm using transfer punches for this. This is a 964th transfer punch, and a quick bang with the hammer makes a nice mark for the centre point of a drill to go into. Then for the 316th hole, I use a 316th transfer punch. So why use transfer punches? Surely I could use the holes in the expansion link blank to guide the drill. Well, yes, I could. Except that I'm not drilling a 964th diameter hole through the plate, I'm drilling a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole through the plate, which is tapping size for 4BA, to take a couple of 4BA bolts. And similarly, I'm not drilling a 3 16th of an inch diameter hole in this position. This is a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill, which is tapping size for 2BA. And on the centre pop mark, on the scribed line, I drill a hole a quarter of an inch in diameter. This is not going to be threaded, this is just to allow a peg to go through that is a quarter of an inch in diameter. In this clip, at a very high speed, I am threading the holes, first of all using a 4BA tap, and for a lubricant I'm using some of my steam oil and rapeseed oil mixture, and finally, in exactly the same way, after tapping the larger hole 2BA, I fit the relevant bolts into the holes and tighten them up, and the expansion link blank is now firmly held to the metal plate after which I can fit the entire assembly into the four-jaw chuck, and a piece of brass bar goes through the hole in the centre, down into the fitting that I made earlier, which centralises the whole thing. All that remains to be done is to tighten the jaws of the four-jaw chuck, and adjust the position of the milling table and the rotary table, so that the part is precisely positioned, ready for cutting. Before starting the cutting process though, I mark some lines from the centre point, to show how far the cutter needs to go. And now it's fun time. The first cut taken is very shallow, just to confirm that the cutter is in the right position. This next sequence took over an hour to complete. The video has to be speeded up to show the process in full in a reasonable time. The more that I watch this clip as I'm editing it, the more I think it would make a good video running slower than this, and with some of my nice gentle ambient music behind it, I think it would make quite a good relaxation video. On the other hand, I'm not relaxed at all, because if anything goes wrong with this, I have to start again, and going back to the beginning would not be good. The absolute worst case scenario is that the milling cutter breaks and damages the slot, or maybe worse than that, the whole thing disintegrates. And that's why I use the Loctite 603 
to hold the blank firmly down to the plate. I wouldn't use Loctite 603 on its own, it would probably come loose, but the combination of the Loctite 603 and the three bolts holding the part down to the plate means that it's highly unlikely to come loose. And now, as a special treat for the viewer who wrote in and said, why not show some parts of the sequence in real time? So as a special treat for you, here it is. This is in real time. And this is the part where I've moved the main hand wheels on the milling table to widen the slot in the expansion link and take some very fine cuts. In this clip I'm using my Henry vacuum cleaner nozzle to just vacuum away the chippings so I can see exactly what the cutter is doing. And this next pass should give me quite a good finish. As a beginner you may not have a rotary table. These used to be horrendously expensive. I paid a lot of money for this one, but these days you can get rotary tables really cheaply. These cheap rotary tables may not be the highest quality machine tool accessory you'll ever buy, but as this is not an 8 hours a day industrial workshop, it's only a home workshop, these cheaper tools can be more than adequate for the small amount of use that they get. However, you can make an expansion link without a rotary table. Here's the first method. Simply drill lots of holes along this scribed arc. The holes must be very, very close together, then use a needle file to file them together, and after about four hours, you will end up with some sort of a slot. If you have a milling machine or a lathe milling attachment, but still no rotary table, this is another method. Obtain a piece of quarter inch steel plate, almost identical to the one that I'm using, drill a hole in the center, bolt it to your milling table using a T-nut and a bolt, but make it slack enough so you can swivel it. Put some end stops in place on the milling table to stop the steel plate moving too far at each end. Maybe fit a handle to the steel plate and then just move the steel plate from side to side underneath the milling cutter. But if I were you, I would put a rotary table on your shopping list. I unbolted the nearly complete expansion link from the piece of steel and I was pleased to see that the Loctite was still holding it firmly in position and then I took the whole assembly into the outer part of the workshop where I heated it with my blowtorch. Once the Loctite gave way, I carefully removed the expansion link and after the part had fully cooled, I used some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper and a little oil to remove the Loctite residue and generally clean up the part. So was it worth it? This is how it started out and now it's like this. A finished expansion link for the Stuart 5A steam engine. The next part to make for this is the die block that slides up and down the centre slot, but that's in the next video. In this clip I've temporarily fitted the parts very loosely to the engine. Everything's lining up quite well. The cross bin that fits through the valve fork is a little bit too long, so I'll machine a bit off that. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.